Hello everyone and welcome to Heart Matters. We have another great program lined up for you. Our testimony today comes from a Stephenville woman who over time beat the odds when faced with depression and divorce. Listen as Denise Avery shares of God's redeeming and restoring power in her life. Also on today's show, we have Katie Andrews from St. John's. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's program. Matters is made possible through the local support. Beaton's Realty, serving Gander and area. Visit beatonsrealty.ca today to see a full listing of properties in your area. Midway Garden Restaurant. Stop in for great food and warm, friendly service. With locations at 342 Hamilton River Road in Happy Valley Goose Bay and at the Midway Travel Inn in Churchill Falls. Specializing in health and bulk food, visit Nan's Pantry in the Gander Mall. Nan's Pantry has everything you're looking for. Each year, according to Statistics Canada, 37 to 41 percent of marriages end in divorce. Married couples are separating for a variety of reasons and at all stages of life. 
leaving homes divided and families torn. Our story today comes from a woman who faced a broken marriage with the strength and grace only God can give. My name is Denise Avery, and I'm originally from a little town called Summerford. It's uh, out around central Newfoundland, and uh, I lived there for the first 14 years of my life. And my my father um, had been working away much of that time in my early years, and uh, it was around my 13th and early 14th year that he actually decided to go into the ministry. He felt called to go into the ministry. We moved from community to community for a while and uh, my dad was ministering in pioneer preaching for about uh, 25, 26 years. I, uh, I went off and took a year of college uh, and um, I became deeply involved with the things of the world, you know, as we like to term it. I was very, um, actively pursuing my purpose in life, but I was doing it by pursuing the things of the world and trying to figure out, you know, who am I and why am I here? As I was going through those experiences and trying to figure out who I am, I went through a lot of different things that were very painful and, and very hurtful at times. and. I began to understand that uh, I was experiencing severe depression, and I started to learn about that. I, I started to learn about depression, and I started to read about it and research it. And um, I began to understand that I'd actually been experiencing depression for quite some time. But it wasn't until I had married and had my child when I really fell into a very severe uh, depression. And I was at a point where, you know, I really didn't want to be here. I can remember uh, when I was, my son was very young. He was only an infant, really. And uh, I went to the doctor because I was in such a state of despair. And I knew that it was so important to, to be there for him and to be there for my husband and my family. But I just didn't want to be around. I didn't want to be here. So I went to my doctor this, this day and I just, I practically ran into his office because I was so desperate and I needed somebody to help me. And I'd gone numerous times before seeking help for what I was experiencing. And I couldn't understand why I was going through what I was going through when I had so many wonderful things in my life. And this doctor saw me right away. And I guess it was obvious that I was in a great deal of pain and discomfort and he started to talk to me about depression and the severity of it and and he prescribed some medication for me. I started then on a road of um, just taking medication for everything that I was feeling. So there were different things that took place even though I was I was taking medication to help my depression very often, by the time mid-afternoon rolled around, I would be so exhausted I could barely get through the rest of my day. And my husband, who had been very supportive and understood what I was going through, he was getting to a point of, you know, he was pretty tired. And my family was pretty tired. And they were tired, I think, of seeing me go through the pain that I was going through. My marriage started to suffer, and I, start, I became so self-absorbed that I just, every day it was about me getting through the day. 
I was there in physical, in a physical sense, but I wasn't there in my heart and I wasn't there in my mind. That came into play when, when my husband decided that, you know, he, he, was, he was too tired. I think I was at the point in my life where I didn't want to go through it anymore either. I was always so exhausted and I couldn't be a good mom, I couldn't be a good wife, I couldn't be a good sister, and you know, that was always um, playing on my mind. So, you know, along with the fact that I was experiencing severe depression and clinical depression, uh, I was also then uh, constantly condemning myself. I finally, um, I called my dad up this night. It was very late. It was around 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning. And we, we talked a little bit, and I explained to him that I was ready to give my heart back to God, and I was tired of running from him. That night, I experienced a sleep and a rest and a peace that I hadn't experienced for a long time. So it was uh, 2010 when my marriage really reached the breaking point and my husband, uh, he informed me that he needed, he needed to get away. He needed, to, uh, he needed for things to get better and he didn't know how really that was going to unfold. And we were both working uh, very hard, many hours and we were trying to raise our son, you know, as effectively as we possibly could, and he was involved in all kinds of different things. And I asked God, you know, why is this happening? I just, I don't understand. Why is this happening? Even though I'd given my heart back to God, even though I was trying to live right, even though I was trying to be a good person, um, the depression was still there. And I believe that he led me to the scripture that said, you do not have because you do not ask, you know? And I realized in that moment, I don't think I've ever actually asked God to heal me. So I spent time in prayer and I, I, I asked him with probably the most heartfelt cry at that point in my life that I ever had. You know, I need you to heal me of this. Within um, a few days, I had almost no symptoms at all. And it was just like something, you know, it was like a, a, a window opening up, you know, and you feel the breeze coming in and it's such a great feeling. And that was what it felt like for me over the course of the next few days. But it was at that time as well when my dad got sick and then it was shortly after that my mom became ill. And all of these things were coming in to, I think, try and cause me to go back to the medication again to cope. But I didn't. I experienced some pretty difficult days, but I said, you know what, Lord? I believe with all of my heart that this came from you, that you want me to walk in freedom. It brought me to a different level in my experience, I believe, with God. I had this clarity, like I, I don't know if I ever experienced it prior to that. But it was also at this time that my marriage was crumbling. When I had made my vow to my husband, I meant until death do us part. And I know that he meant that as well. If we're not in a good place with God, we can take our eyes off of the prize, so to speak, and it's so easy to become disconnected. A very good friend of mine asked me to meet up, and so we got together for a coffee. I sat across from her and I told her that I was committed to standing for my marriage. And there was, there was no, you know, no signs that he was ever coming back. In fact, it was the opposite. It, it appeared like, you know, he had gone on and he was going on with his life and, and that was that, it was over. It was after that that I sought counsel from my church and my, my pastors. I realized that God is the great restorer. 
and that he will restore what the enemy tries to steal from us. God will restore if we believe him, if we trust him, if we follow him, and if we allow him to lead us. And very often he would, I believe it with all my heart, he would bring me to scripture that would talk about restoration. So I believed within my heart of hearts that God was going to heal us and bring us back together again. It was about two and a half years of standing and living the principles of the word and learning about the change that had to occur within me um, before my husband would return. My husband was in our kitchen and uh, he hadn't actually come back home at that point, but he was in our, in our kitchen and I was in the laundry room and I came out and walked out into the hallway and he, he was at the kitchen sink and he turned around and he said, uh, I think I'm ready to move back in now. And just leading up to that point, and it had taken all that time, the two and a half years that felt some days like 20 years, you know, it seemed like it was taking forever. I was at such a place of peace, you know, with my relationship with God. And I had surrendered everything to God. And that was when my husband turned around and said, I'm ready to come home. Going through a separation and going through, you know, looking at the possibilities of divorce and your family being torn apart is devastating. It's a, uh, there were times that I felt like my heart was literally breaking. And even then, when I would turn to God, he would give me the encouragement that I needed. And he would allow peace to flow. And it was like he was always there. And, and even through the demonstrations by my earthly father of the love and the support and the unconditional love, which was so important, I knew and I, and I grew to, to know that that's the way that God is for us. You know, he loves us unconditionally. We don't have to work toward pleasing God. And there were points in, in my life when I turned to everything else before, you know, I get to rock bottom and say, okay, God, you have my attention. If we decide to trust God and obey Him and walk in His truths, He will turn it around for His glory and for our good. Now, if you've enjoyed that interview or any part of the show, then we'd love to hear from you. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can visit our website at heartmatters.tv or you can call our feedback line at 709-256-3336. In addition to that, you can leave us your feedback on our Facebook page or even our Twitter account. And now a word from our sponsors. Heart Matters is made possible through local support. Need something shipped? Contact Dooley's Trucking in Gander. Ship with the best. Ship Dooley's Trucking. For all your furniture and building supply needs, see us first at Notre Dame Home Furnishings at Notre Dame Castle Building Centers, where our family's been serving yours for over 60 years. Terry's Tents, specializing in custom canvas products, picture framing, embroidery, and printing. Also carrying a wide variety of craft supplies, fabrics, leathers, and furs. Located at 326 Hamilton River Road in Happy Valley, Goose Bay. Still to come on today's show. To the Point with Ralph Benson. And more music from Katie Andrews. Here on Heart Matters.
Hey, don't shoot! I'm on your side. We were playing cowboys and Indians, and sometimes we'd say, whose side are you on? I remember too, as a kid, my brothers, my older brothers, sometimes would bully me. I was the baby of the family. And when mom would come into the picture, they would always say, you're taking sides with Ralph. It seems in this generation, everyone's taking sides with someone. There are so many views and so many issues to take sides with. We often feel it's impossible for us not to be divided. And there are so many wars that have been fought and fought today, it's so sad. We are a divided world. I'm standing here in front of the War Memorial here in Gander. It's sad to read all of these names, and while at the same time it gives a feeling of comfort to know that they fought on our side. It's very honorable to come as they do at times and, and remember those who died, died for us because they were on our side. We live in freedom. The Word of God talks about Joshua as he was approaching Jericho. He looked up and he saw a man right in front of him standing with a drawn sword. Joshua stepped up and said, whose side are you on, ours or our enemies? In war, it's good to know who's on your side. There is another real war happening between good and evil. The battle is to bring people under bondage and to destroy their lives. However, the good news is God is on our side. In this great war, Jesus died for us to give us freedom from sin, fear, addiction, guilt, even death itself. People don't always understand. They have a perception of God as their enemy, a condemning judge who wants to send them to hell. They feel anger and blame towards God. The church hasn't always given a clear understanding. And the result is people fail to understand and reject the very one who is there to help them. A very sad story from Texas last week of a man and a woman, despite verbal and posted warnings not to swim in the river due to alligators, they would not listen to the people working on the river. Witness say they jumped into the water and within minutes screamed for help. The woman got out and the man was screaming and the alligator was taking him under. As the witnesses watched the alligator pull him down three times, he died. How crazy is that? The people around pleaded, but he did not listen. He didn't understand. I have seen young people. They didn't seem to understand. They had no time for God, didn't believe in Him nor respect Him. They seen God as some kind of a religious figure who is unjust. They seen Him as if He were their enemy. I've seen them die of drug overdose, suicide, accidents while under the influence or simply full of hatred and anger and living sad and a lonely life. I want you to know that God loves you. He is on your side. He has a wonderful plan for your life, a plan of freedom from sin and guilt and a secure love for you. All you have to do is stop fighting. Accept the peace that Christ gives to you. There is security in His great love. Psalmist said, when I cry to you, Lord, then my enemies turn back, for God is for me. He is on your side. You just need to trust Him. And the wonderful truth is God has no respect of persons. He doesn't take sides. He will not reject you. He is just. He loves you, and He takes sides for you in the worst moment of your life if you will just trust and surrender yourself to Him. Close captioning for Heart Matters is brought to you by... King Insurance and Investment Solutions, serving Newfoundland and Labrador. For all your insurance and investment needs, contact King Insurance and Investment Solutions at 36 Cromer Avenue in Grand Falls, Windsor. darkness You overcame all my mistakes I feel your love, oh it surrounds me You conquered fear so I'm not afraid And I have walked through fire I have walked through flame But still my heart will sing Because of your great love We're more than conquerors Because of you we sing You are greater You are stronger You are higher You're my defender 
know what you think of our program today. Please visit our website at heartmatters.tv or leave us a message by calling 256-3336. Well, that's it for another show, but we want to take a moment to thank our guests, Denise Avery and Katie Andrews, for being on today's program. It's great to be reminded that God is concerned about every aspect of our lives. So if you're living in a broken marriage, struggling with sickness or battling with depression, know that Jesus is close and he's waiting for you to turn to him. As always, we encourage you to visit our website to stay up to date with what's happening on the show. Until next time, I'm Mike Freak and thanks for watching Heart Matters. Heart Matters.